Hey, hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today we're going to be taking to the skies, either by ourselves or with one more player in the latest game in the Oniverse series. This is Arion. In this game, you are attempting to build airships, but you have to manage your resources very carefully in order to do so. It's a dice-driven game in which you are going to be rolling dice, making combinations of those dice in order to acquire different things like blueprints and materials you'll need for those airships. The twist, of course, is that to gain re-rolls in the game, you have to burn away those very resources you are attempting to acquire. So it makes a kind, the kind of game that you have to balance on a razor's edge in many ways. So, as I said, the game can be played solitaire or with two players cooperatively, but I'm going to be showing you mainly the solitaire mode here. I'll briefly touch on some of the expansions that come in the game, and then we'll come on back after that. I'll tell you what I think of it, and sort of where I see it fitting into the rest of the series. So here's what the base game looks like set up for one player. In this case, I've got the six decks here uh, shuffled individually and then one card revealed from each. I've got the six airships that I need to build over here in order to win the game. And I've got these three tokens here, which are going to allow me some dice manipulation, as well as my six dice here. What I'm attempting to do is build all six of these airships before I run out of cards in the center of the table. And each one of the airships takes three things. So I'm going to need a blueprint for them. So if we take a look at this one here, I need that blueprint there. I'm going to need supplies, which is this right here. And then lastly, I'm going to need some crew for the airship. And I'm going to have an area in front of me, two areas in fact, in a, uh, two, in a single player game, in which I can work on airships. So it's sort of two hangers, if you will. So, on my turn, I'm going to go through three different phases. The first phase is rolling. I'm going to take the dice, I'm going to roll them, possibly re-roll them. I'll show you how that goes. After that, I'm going to do the acquire phase, in which I am hoping to acquire one of these six cards down here and take that, utilize it. And then lastly, I have the replenish phase, in which I will reveal new cards from the decks into any spot that is empty at that point, okay? So starting from the beginning, I've got all of my options right now. Of course, I can take pretty much anything. I just have to make sure that crew is last. So the other two pieces of an airship must already be in play for me to take a crew card. So I'm going to go ahead and roll all my dice, all right? So I've got here, I rolled two ones, a two, a three, a five, and a six, all right? And each of these cards has a specific requirement. So for example, over here, two pairs. Three of a kind, a full house, so three of one kind, two of another. Four of a kind, this one can be uh, three pairs or two triplets, and then this has to be a straight, all right? Uh, and that straight only needs five dice, not six, not all of them. So looking at what I've got here, I've got one pair. I've also got, uh, if I roll a four, I've got a straight, so I can decide what I, I want to go with here. And right now, again, all of the airships are available, so it does not really matter. This is not a great roll to begin with, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to go for one of the easy ones down here. And either one works for me right now. To re-roll, I have to discard a card from the display. So, for example, I might take this one, I might discard it, and I would discard that above the pile. And then I re-roll. I'm going to hang on to my two ones, and I'll re-roll the rest of these. And I got another one, I got two fours, and I have a five. Now with this roll, I could take this card, but that's not going to be uh, good for me right now. I can't keep it because it's, uh, it's a crew, and I can't use that yet. So instead, what I'm going to do is say, all right, fine, I'm going to take that blueprint there with three of a kind, the three ones. I take it, I put it in one of my workshops, I'll just say that's right here. And uh, that, so that is the rolling, right, in the second phase, and now I'll do the replenish phase. So this is starting to work on one. What I like to do personally is grab the one I'm working on, in this case it's this one, and just keep it near there to remind me what I'm doing, what I've got going in that one workshop. And then I replenish from the decks some new cards, all right? Now, there are cards uh, of... Generally, there's three different types of cards, as I explained over here, with the crew being these two different kinds here. 
But there's one more kind of card that has not shown up, and that is the books. The books, like this one here, when you take that, you're going to put it in front of you. You can only have one book at any given moment, and uh, they let you bend and break the rules somewhat. So I can discard this book to do a couple of different things. I can discard and I get to roll up to three times without burning any cards out here. I could discard this and take an element when I take something, put it in reserve if I'm not ready for it to go into one of my two workshops. Or I could also, um, uh, two discarded cards, take two discarded cards from up here and add them back to their deck, on top of the deck. So if I've cycled away from something and I really need to put that back into play, then I can let a book go and do that as well. All right. So I've started over here and it's the top of the turn again. So I roll, I take a look at what I've got. I've got three twos here and I've got a four, six and a one. All right. Um, and so at this point, I'm going to need some supplies for this one, which is this matching card here. But I can be I can start working on the other uh, in the other hanger. Right. So I could do that. Uh, I've got three of a kind. I don't quite have two pairs yet. I don't really need that. So let's say I'm going to try for one of the more difficult ones right now. I really need to basically grab one of these two. Or I could do that. But again, you have to manage which ones you take and when. So let's say I want to be really stubborn and I want that card right now. So I'm going to go ahead and discard one. I'm going to keep my three twos and I'm going to reroll the rest. Whoops. Got one got away from me. There we go. So I got six and a six. Fine, I want the other six right here. So I'm going to discard one. And I'm going to roll again. Okay, now I have four of a kind. So I got that and that. It's still not going to help me though. So I'm going to discard that one and roll that two again. And I got another two. However, I do have... This is really not a great turn because I'm burning through so many cards that I'll have to replenish. Just kind of showing you to, to make a point and show you how it works. I do have these three over here. And I can use them each once per game, give them up, and change a die to whatever I want to. So I might have, if I really needed that right now, I might have given one of those up. Said, okay, I've got the combination, and then take this. It can go in the same one, because now I've got the blueprint and I've got the supplies. And that's going to end my turn. So now all I've got to do is replenish all of these decks, and I can keep on going. Don't forget, I've still got one empty workshop over here. Um, that's it. So I roll, I keep on going, I will be burning through these decks, of course, and if I don't get all six of these completed before I don't have anything else face up up there, then I am going to lose the game. That's basically it. When you are playing with two players, the difference is each player has one workshop in front of them. You also have one common workshop you can both place things into, and you have half of these blueprints that you are going to need to work on. So that's the general breakdown there. There are also some expansions. I'm going to show you a couple of my favorites, okay? This expansion, which is the one with the fewest components, is called the Flagship. And you are going to put this ship into play as well. And you uh, are going to need to complete that one. This one does not take any blueprints, but you have to send one of each of the provisions and then one of each of the crews to that ship for you finish the game in order to win, all right? However, with because of that extra load, you are going to have some special cards to help you out. Uh, I do want to um, make it clear that this is not going to be taking up one of your two workshops. This is always in play. It's its own space. You can assign cards to it when you collect cards. Put them in there. You still need to send these two in last, the crew, but uh, it's something else for you to contend with. To set up that though, you're going to shuffle these and you're going to grab two and they're going to give you special abilities. So, you're going to grab two of them, you'll put them in play, and then you will follow the special text on them for the entirety of the game. So, for example, what I've got here now is, uh, this one says the pulpit can hold any number of books. The pulpit is where you put your one book you can normally have. Uh, because I have this, I can hold multiple books, and it also lets me know that discarding a book lets me re-roll up to four times, not three. And then the other one here says that I can acquire crew cards before blueprints and materials. So I, the crew does not have to be last 
if I've got this special power in play. And there's all sorts of neat things here. This one lets me discard a book to retrieve three cards from a discard pile, not just two. Uh, this one says I can discard a card from the display to change one die to its opposing side instead of re-rolling it. Uh, this one says after rolling for the first time each turn, I can re-roll all six dice for free, one time. Really great for my example first roll, maybe. And then the last one here, if you discarded one or more cards from the display, you can skip acquiring and go directly to phase three. Because normally, unless you can acquire something and choose to take that thing, you have to keep rolling until you qualify for something. So yes, sometimes you have awful turns in which you just burn through the display. And once they're all gone, obviously you cannot acquire something. You go straight to replenish and you have to flip up all six new cards. Very tough, wasteful turns that those can be. The other expansion I want to show you, again, one of my favorites. And there are uh, six in total, technically. Uh, well, yes, yeah, six in total, including one of them that uses the little figure in the game. Cute little guy. Uh, and the insert, by the way, is quite a, a lovely insert as well. But, that, but that, that little guy there is part of one of the expansions. But this one is not. This one is called the Hammerbirds. And in it, you are going to be having to uh, deal with one more thing, of course, that you have to finish in order to win the game. You see, there are these uh, stone clouds that have to be broken away in order for you to launch your ships. And there are six of these. They all show a 30 with an arrow, uh, meaning you flip this over, and then a 30 with a crossed out X, meaning you will discard this stone cloud. And then the birds are going to be shuffled into their respective decks as listed on the back. As they come up, you're gonna be uh, seeing these in play, and on your turn, during the second step, instead of acquiring a card, you can instead break some of these stone clouds by discarding birds and adding the total of your dice to that. So let's say I've got a single bird in play. If I choose to do one of those actions, I'll just discard this for five, add the total of my dice to that. And if I make it to at least 30, I can break one of these and turn it over. If it already was broken, then I can completely remove it. But if I wait and leave that bird around and now I can discard two birds, now they add up to 40 plus my dice. And then if I wait, of course, for three of these, they equal 100 plus my dice, which means I can make some real progress here. All right, so that's how they work. It's a very neat thing and it brings into the game not just dice combinations, but the dice total as well. I want to get those really heavy rolls and you have to then consider, well, do I use all these sixes for something else or to destroy some stone clouds? So there you go, that is a taste of the base game, a taste of some of these expansions, and you should now have a pretty good idea of how to play the game. So let's go back up top, and let me tell you what I think of this one. All right, so that is Arion. let's talk about this. Before I do that, I wanna mention I'm a big fan of this series of games. They are all for one player or two, cooperatively, and uh, the first one is still my favorite, Onirim or Onirim, but uh, they've all been at the very least interesting and engaging in the last two. This one and Nautilian, the last one, were both dice-driven games. I was very interested to see what the designer was coming out with this time around, and I have to say, I'm not disappointed. This is a really fun little dice-driven game. So, let's dive into what I think of it, all right? I've got one minor negative, and that is with the aesthetics of the game. Not the artwork that's completely subjective. I'm talking about the iconography. It's gonna take some getting used to. That's my main issue. It, uh, at first, I remember reading through the rules, kind of setting everything up, and having a hard time figuring out what card was what at first blush. Now, that will go away after a play or two. It becomes absolutely second nature, but it is there. The components are very nice. The cards are not linen finished, but they are good quality. And the dice in this are lovely. Bright colors, very well made. So that's my only small negative. Everything else I, I really do like. The theme, it's whimsical. It fits into the rest of this bizarre dreamlike world that the designer has built, this universe, universe. Um, the replayability, fantastic. Tons of expansions, tons of things for you to react to. And while it is a dice-driven game, 
many strategies and tactics as well. So the replayability here is going to be high, even without taking into account the expansions and exploring all of that. I think the base game by itself is still highly replayable. Game length. The box lists 15 minutes. I don't think that's quite right. This one is a little bit longer than many of the other games in the series. I don't think it outstays its welcome. I just think it's a little bit longer and there's more going on. And when you add expansions to that, then that will also be a little bit longer because pretty much all of them, almost, make the decks of cards out there larger, meaning you will not hit end game and lose as quickly as you would in the regular game. You have more cards to burn through in order for that to happen. So while I don't think it outstays its welcome, it's not 15 minutes, it's gonna be longer than that. Uh, ease of play. The rules in this are excellent. They're very well written, it's all very well laid out, and I like the concepts of play. I like the core game, and then how each of the expansions sort of tackles a different aspect of it and takes that little element and turns it on its head. I enjoy that. I don't adore every expansion in this. There's some that I probably won't play with very much, but the ones I do like I think are very engaging and interesting and change up the game in clever ways. Lastly, tactics, strategy, luck. The luck here is certainly present in every single role in the game, so you will have to deal with the luck. But I think there is enough going on. I think it is uh, there is enough reacting, enough manipulation, especially with some of those expansions, that you are going to find neat ways to attempt to mitigate that. If you are someone who absolutely abhors luck, I don't think you're going to like this. It is sort of a Yahtzee-inspired game. But if you like the interest between rolling dice to acquire something while simultaneously gaining re-rolls by giving up those somethings, then I think you're gonna like this. That core concept was polished in this game to perfection, I would say. So, I was very impressed with it. The games in this series have all sort of tackled something different, like the last one, Nautilian, I was talking about that. That one's sort of this designer's take on roll and move. Very good game. Uh, and a very short game. That one is quite short. This one is, of course, their take on Yahtzee. And I think for that style of game, this is quite an achievement. It's a really fun, solitaire game. It's good, a, a neat two-player game. Not a lot of bizarre adjustments that have to be made for two. So I like that. And then the expansions on top of that are going to give you some legs. You, you're going to be able to play this for a long time. So there you go. I really like this. This is going to get a seal of excellence from me. One of my favorites at the end of the day in the series. It's uh, This could easily be top three in the series for me. So I certainly recommend it. Check it out if you want to roll some dice, have some fun. Arion, again, seal of excellence. I'm Z Garcia, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.